everyone. Welcome to the ninth lecture in the Basics of Research series. My name is Samira and I'm a final year student at BJGMC Pune. So this video has two important parts to it. The first one is implication writing. So here I'll be teaching you about what implication writing is and how to go about it. The second is referencing software. I will be mentioning the types and explaining one of them. So if you're here for the second part of the video, the timestamp is in the description box below. So before I begin, Jingnyasa is a student-run organization where we basically aim to put all the information that we wished we knew before we started with our research projects. So what we want to do is give you or provide you with all the information that you need in one place so you can become successful researchers. So don't forget to like, subscribe to our channel and comment if you want to and make sure you spread the word. Okay, so let's dive straight in. So the word implication actually has many meanings, but in the research world, it basically means how your results have an effect on policy making or theory or clinical practice or even future research. So let's say you conducted a study and you have your results ready. But these results need to mean something to someone. And that's where the implications step in. The implications section of your paper usually comes either at the end, once you're done writing the results and the discussion, or it can come under another subheading. But this really depends on the body you're writing for. So for example, ICMR, they, in their proposal writing, they require a section on implications only. Now the question arises is how is implication separate from conclusions or discussion? So the important thing to remember is that discussion is where you state and you explain your numbers and statistics that came out in your results. Here you're extracting meaning from your results. Conclusion, on the other hand, is sort of a restatement of your hypothesis or your main results. Here, you're reminding the reader of what he has just read. But implications are a bit different. Here, you're explaining how the results of your study have an impact on the field that you're studying under, or how your results um, reject or accept or even aid in policy making. They could have an effect on the theoretical knowledge under the field that you're studying, or perhaps have some effect on clinical practice. So although implications can be a part of conclusion, as I mentioned earlier, it really depends on whom you are writing this paper for. So how do you write it? Well, one good way to go about it is take your result statement, have a look at it, and ask the question, so what? So if you have a statement which says, well, we, I found that X leads to Y, so what? That usually should answer your question and make the implication writing process easy. All right, so let's get to the fun part, referencing software. So this is one of the most time-saving and efficient tools you will ever use in research. I have to admit that I almost participated in research projects for a year before I actually used one of these. And I can tell you, I felt quite silly by the end of it. Um, so if you're one of those people who have to change the formatting of your references manually because one journal rejects your paper and you want to submit it to a next, or if you have realized that, oh, this statement needs a reference and I haven't added it yet, and you add one in between, and that means that you have to change your entire list of numbers manually, then trust me, you need a referencing software. So let's get some terms clear first. What is referencing? So it's the process in which you attribute certain ideas, statements, or even work like research findings to other authors indicating the source. So let's say you have a particular statement that you have made that is not proved by the results of your paper and you have gotten it from somebody else's paper. So you need to add that reference. So a bibliography is also known as a reference list. It comes towards the end of your paper. It's basically a list of all the references that you have made in the body of your paper. Whereas in text citations are letters or numbers that are used to indicate 
a particular reference that you have made, which will lead the reader to your reference list. Now, these in-text citations and the references can have different formats, so those are known as referencing styles. It's important to pay attention to this because different journals have different requirements. So, well, thankfully, your referencing software manages changing these formats for you if you ever need to. Adding references manually is a tedious job. You'll have to do everything on your own, but why do it when you have a software to do it for you? So there are three types that I am going to be mentioning today, although I'm sure there are many more. So the first one is EndNote, the second one is Zotero, and the third one is Mendeley. Now EndNote is actually paid, but Zotero and Mendeley are free. So in order for you to gain a better understanding of how these softwares work, I'm going to be explaining one in great detail, and that's Zotero. So I've given you a short tutorial on how to use Zotero. If you like, you can follow it along with me, or you can watch it and follow the steps later. Zotero is a desktop application that you can download from zotero.org. So let's put that in the web browser. I'm using Chrome on this one. So here's the website, and we can see that there's a nice big download button. It's as easy as that, you just have to click on it. And it will take you to this page. And you can see two panes. The one on the left is for the desktop application itself. And the one on the right is the connector, which means with this, you will be able to add references directly from your web browser. And for this one, um, it shows Chrome. So I already have this on my desktop, so I'm not going to download it. But the steps are pretty simple and you won't have to um, you won't face any difficulty. Okay, so now let's open um, Zotero and let's have a look. So here you can see three panes. The one in the middle is quite full because I've used this before, but if it's the first time you're using it, it's going to be empty. And I'll just open my library to show you how there are different files and folders. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open preferences just so I can show you what it looks like. Now this has different selections, but what we're going to need is the sync option. So for you, um, instead of seeing this account, you will see a create account link. So definitely do that because you will be able to connect your Zotero um, to different desktops and you can work uh, wherever you go. Okay, so the first step that we're going to do is we're going to open a new folder. I will name it as Zotero Tutorial. Okay. And here we go. It's nice and empty and ready for us to add references. So there are two ways you can do this. Um, the first one that I'm going to show you is via adding it directly from the web browser itself. So let's open Chrome again. And let me punch in something random just to show you. And I mean, it has to be COVID, doesn't it? <laughs> um, and here we go. That's features evaluation and treatment. Let's have a look at this one. So this is just for demonstration purposes. So let's suppose I've read the article and I want to add it as a reference. So you can see on the right, there is a, an extension. If you click on it, it will directly add it to your Zotero library, so you don't have to copy paste anything at all. And it shows me the article and how it is a PubMed entry. And it's saving to the folder I want. So here, because I have multiple folders, I could select the one I want. So this one, I, I want to save it into Zotero tutorial. And there we go. It's as simple as that. So let's add a couple more just so that I can show you um, exactly how to add them into the document later on. So we'll go through the same process again, and that's done. Now I'm speeding it up a little, and here we have the WHO uh, blog and ICMR's website. Okay, so now we're back to our Zotero desktop application, and as you can see, everything is added automatically. Each article that we had a look at is all here and all the details about it. And the cool thing about Zotero is that you can edit it right here. So let's say I want to change the name because I think there's a mistake and I add the word demo. 
and it gets saved. So the second way in which you can add references to your library is via the magic wand button. So when I click on that, you can see a box here and it shows you different options that you can enter in order to add the reference. So let's open Google Chrome again and go back to the page in which we have saw a lot of papers. Okay, let's go for this one. So there are different options that I could choose because Zotero, uh, Zotero can recognize any one of them, but I'm going to choose the DOI and I copy, open Zotero again, click on this magic wand button right here and paste it. Just give it a few seconds and there we go. The exact article is now added. So those are the two ways in which you can do that. Now let's make our own research paper. Um, we're going to be adding references to the lines that I write here. Okay, so as you can see, the Zotero tab has already gotten added automatically onto your Word document. So you don't have to do this yourself. It happens automatically. Now I want to add a citation. So I'm going to place my mouse where I want the citation to go and click on add or edit. Now it'll ask you for a format. So you need to make sure you're using the right format for your reference. And I'm going to choose the AMA, but there are lots of different options to choose from. Okay, so let's go for the AMA. Now it gives me a big red box and I could choose anything but from the article to pull it up. So I could use the title or the author's name, or the journal's name, and it'll show me the article I want. And when I click enter, there, as you can see, there's a nice number there that indicates the first reference that I've added. And let's do the same for the rest. So what happens if I don't really remember the name of the reference that I want to add? So we've added a bunch of references to our library, and then we're thinking, I don't remember what it was called. So you can actually change the view. So instead of just seeing this red box, if I select the classic view, then it opens up my Zotero library on a different window, and then I can see which reference that I wanted, select the right one, and click OK. And there we go. So what happens if I want to add two references to one statement? We could click the Add or Edit Citation button again, put in the reference that we wanted to add there. But as you can see, there's no comma between the two numbers, and that's a problem. There has to be a comma. So how do you make sure, or how do you enter one in? It's pretty simple. So let's delete that and go back. And in this red bar, I'm going to add both of the references that I wanted to for that particular statement together. So I don't click enter, and I add the second one as well. Then I click enter, and there we go, there's a comma. Okay, so let's add our bibliography. Click on add or edit bibliography, and it's done. It was as easy as that, and now I have every reference that I added in the right place with the right number. So what happens if I want to enter another reference in between all of this? So let's see how Zotero manages to keep this particular order. Okay, so let's say we want to add a reference here. I click on Add or Edit Citation, pull up a reference that I wanted to, and what Zotero managed to do was change the order of the numbers. So it would reflect the exact order in which they should be in the document or in the paper and the bibliography. Now finally, what happens if you, let's say you submit your paper to a journal and they reject it, so you go for another one. And they have an entirely different format for their references. So what you can do is click on Document Preferences and just select a new reference style. Let's say we, the, the new journal wants APA. And within no time, the document has changed the format of the references to the one that you desired.
So EndNote is a paid software, as I mentioned before. So if you're just starting out, I'd suggest you go for Zotero or Mendeley because they're both free. So to help you choose between the two, I'll list out some similarities and differences, and you can make the choice depending on what works for you. So both are free, as I mentioned. In addition, you can buy some extra storage if you need to. Both have a very good ability in being able to extract information from not only reference papers, but web pages as well. So for example, um, when you have current affairs like COVID-19, sometimes the information that you write in your paper comes from blogs like the WHO blog. So Zotero and Mendeley both are able to extract information from these web pages easily as well. Now, both also have thousands and thousands of different citation styles to choose from. In addition, Zotero is able to download extra ones if you ever need to. So that's one added advantage of Zotero, which perhaps Mendeley doesn't really have. So a few more places in which Zotero scores over Mendeley are that it is compatible with Google Docs. So if you're the kind of person who works on Google Docs and doesn't really use MS Word, then you can use um, Zotero. Another advantage would be that Zotero works very quickly or a little faster than Mendeley. So I personally have noticed a lag when Mendeley saves references uh, from the internet. So I would say Zotero is a little faster. It also works a little better if you're using a wide range of articles and not just PDFs, because Mendeley does specialize in um, working with PDFs, something that Zotero hasn't specified. Mendeley, however, is very good with PDFs. So one cool feature I noticed with this software is that you are able to highlight in the PDFs that you have saved to the Mendeley library, and you can add notes, basically study your reference on the, in the library itself. So for a particular research project, you have all your references in one place and your tiny notes that you have made about them. A pleasant surprise that I received while I was using Mendeley was I received an email with references that I had not seen before, but that were related to some of the earlier references that I had saved onto my Mendeley library. So basically what it did was it saw what kind of papers I was looking for and pulled up papers that they thought were related to those and sent them to me, which is super helpful if you're writing um, a, you know, a research paper and you're still looking out for more references. It also has an iPhone or an iPad application, so you can download these applications and work on your references on the go. It's also... Um, links to a Zotero library. So let's say you're working with both Zotero and Mendeley on the same project for some reason, then you can link the two if you need to via Mendeley. And overall, Mendeley is much better for collaborations and working with other authors. So if you're still unsure of whether to download a software or do things manually, I'd suggest you try both. And then you will see what you have been missing out this whole time. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope you liked it, and I hope my enthusiasm for referencing software has convinced you to get one. So if you do like our video, please don't forget to like and definitely add comments in the box because I love doubts. So you can ask me one and I will be sure to reply. If you're new to our channel, definitely watch the videos that we have posted before so that you get an overall view of exactly what research is all about. We release a new video every Monday, so be sure to hit the bell icon if you don't want to miss another one. All right, have a nice day. Bye.